Good morning, everyone. Good morning, morning. Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Oh, today's not Wednesday. What? <laughs> it's Thursday. Sorry about that. Welcome, welcome. Very glad that you're here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Libraries, the one in Evans, the Harlem Library, and also the Grovetown Library, too. And this is one of our classes. This is Library Resources and Apps. This is a very exciting class. So this class kind of started people asking, well, what kind of stuff can I get through the library? What kind of features can I do? What kind of apps can I use? What kind of free services can I use through the library? Ebooks, audiobooks, um, uh, Acorn TV, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, research, uh, um, law resources. So that's kind of how this class came about. So. Uh, if you're joining me for the uh, live, feel free to post any kind of comments or questions that you have in the chat there. I'm happy to help. Now, because we're on the YouTube channel, not Facebook, do realize to post a question. You do have to be logged in to YouTube. And to be able to do a like our videos and subscribe to our videos, you do have to be logged in. So do realize that. So let's talk about the classes that we did this week, which st should still be up and still available on our uh, library um, YouTube channel <laughs> um, but let me ask you this like I said have any questions just go ahead and post it in the chat okay I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about trying to use some of our services and also if you have like a tech question or something um, I'm happy to try to answer that as well so it comes up on Tuesday we did scratch the Python blocks decoding class it was a lot of fun um, it's for folks that have used Scratch before, played around with it some, and then wanted to get more into coding. So we kind of go from one to the other. We did that class again on Wednesday. Actually recommend you watch the Wednesday one because we did post some updates on that one. You know, after teaching a class once, you learn a little more and then you add a little more. Uh, yesterday we did our birding class, which I love so much. It's so much fun. And of course, we've added the backyard birding and recommendations for you to start your own bird feeder and stuff and placement and food and all that kind of good stuff. So definitely feel free to watch that. And it's, now is a great time to do that because while you're staying safe at home, which we're all doing, of course, doing our classes at home and stuff, nothing, no classes are happening at the library. Um, we're actually um, able to enjoy the birds outside a little more. It's a great family thing to do. So the idea of this is that we have it 11 o'clock so you can ask questions and then at 2.30 in the afternoon as well to try to fit in anybody's kind of schedule. Um, so we are doing the same class morning and afternoon. Uh, so I will be talking about some set different topics if I'm not getting any kind of questions, just kind of different resources that the libraries have that are available to you. And let me show you a full schedule of our classes for this month. So next, uh, this is the last day um, of this week, and then next week we're going to be doing Google School, Google Suites, eBay, and Facebook Marketplace, and also at 11 on Wednesday we're going to be doing a new class, Video Creating Basics. We're going to be using the Microsoft, Win uh, Microsoft Windows 10 Photos app that has a video editor now, and we'll be talking about doing slideshows, and you can actually add 3D effects, titles, and also special effects as well they're all built in for free so we'll be talking about that the other thing we're going to be talking about next week is we're going to be doing our birding class again on the 13th at 11 o'clock so come join me for that a lot of fun like i said and at the end of the month we're going to be doing our gadget help so if you or someone has some questions about a gadget that's kind of a drop in so definitely come join me for that just realize our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Yay, the Grovetown Library opened. Yay, the new Grovetown Library is open. Yay, um, curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for more details. And of course, call into the libraries with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Right now we're on the YouTube channel. How, what's an easy way to find our YouTube channel? Search GCHRL videos um, on YouTube and it'll pull right up. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's flip back here. So to begin with, let me ask, do you have any questions to begin with? 
<laughs> and I'm going to actually post my handout in the chat as well. Let me do that real quick. <laughs> Okay, so here's a copy of the handout. I just posted it in the chat there. And there we go, right there. So basically what we would do, of course, right now we're all kind of staying home and staying safe and stuff. So what we would normally do is I'd have this kind of on the screen. Folks would have the laptop in front of them and kind of access anything that they wanted to, to be able to kind of answer any questions about logging in. The biggest thing that you're going to need is your library card to begin with, okay? And if you're watching this and uh, are not, <laughs> I guess you say from Evans, uh, Columbia County, Georgia, I'm only really talking about resources from our library, um, which the access the card, you'd have to talk to the librarian about that and being in our area, of course. Um, so I can't speak for what other libraries have as resources and too, so just check their um, links and websites to find out more information. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started. And I'm going to pop this up. So kind of the idea is that I'm going to show this, and then I'll, if I want to, I'll pull up the, the GCHRL website, and we'll talk about stuff, and I'll kind of bring it back and forth. Um, and if I don't have any questions, I'm just going to talk more detail about uh, the resources that we have and accessing them and ones that I've had folks that get real excited about the ones, especially the ebooks and the the audio books and stuff. Excuse me. So let's talk about what we're going to cover, okay? What you will need, okay? Uh, Pine app, okay? Uh, putting books on hold, renewing books, uh, and knowing about late fees so that maybe you won't have a late fee, okay? A uh, list of overdue fees uh, on the app. Uh, digital card number. So if you don't have your, your card or maybe you've left your card, you know, a good idea in general is to basically have your Pines card, you know, on your keys or something. So there you go right there. It's got the barcode on the back of it to scan, of course. It's a great way to keep up with your card in general. But I know that those can wear out and those can, you know, have a different set of keys or something. But this will allow you to have that uh, digitally. Uh, we'll talk about some law resources that we have. Um, and most of the stuff I'm going to be talking about today is basically if you went just to the, those websites, they would probably charge money. Um, but if you use it through the library, all the resources are completely free. Okay. The library does pay a little bit of a service fee. <laughs> so please use our resources and enjoy them uh, for, you know, there you go right there. Uh, RB Digital, which we'll talk about that. Hopefully everybody loves the RB Digital app. Well, where, there we can get ebooks, e audiobooks, uh, magazines, comics, and Acorn Access, Acorn TV, or resubscribe to it, I should say. Acorn T TV is like a separate app. We'll also be talking about the independent flicks. Ooh. Also, we can access video lessons. To play, uh, learn how to play an instrument, and I'll show you where that is. And then we'll talk about Galileo, Galileo for kids. I know the kids are like going back to school and stuff. So is there a way that we can access some more resources for homework? Absolutely, Galileo Kids is a great way to do it, and they actually have um, grade level research. Okay, so basically you pull it up, and it actually talks about the certain grade levels, and I'll show that. And a big one, and I'll probably talk about it for a while, is Universal Class. Uh, Universal Classes, have you ever heard of Universal Classes? Hmm. 
Okay, the big thing about that is not only can you get continuing education credits, but if you do complete any of the courses, you do get a certificate, and it's also a digital certificate as well that you can actually post on a resume or something. Right now is a great time, hang, you know, hanging at home and stuff. This is now uh, should be viewed as our staying safe um, retraining. <laughs> <laughs> so now's the best time that if you ever wanted to say hey I want to learn how to do coding I want to learn how to do something I want to learn or get a certificate in something now's a great time to do it Universal Class is a great way to do it as well okay we'll also talk about Mango Mango's learning a new language or if English is your second language it also does have English resources on there as well and then I'll add little known gchrl.org resources, ones that were in researching for this class that I didn't know about and then I feel like more people need to know about as well. And then we'll have some references. So before we get started, any questions? Is there a resource that you've tried to access and were unable to? Uh, was there, hmm, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Any, any trouble that you've had? Uh, basically, the main thing is the contact. It's kind of quicker to contact the librarians through the Facebook page they can quickly answer you I know a lot of folks their credit their credit card their um, the library card may have been um, I'm trying to think about the exact term of it is but anyway unaccessible you can talk to librarians they'll reactivate it so that you can access the ebooks and everything okay I get ready. Graphics come. Ooh, what was that? That's right, a graphic flew in. So I'm going to disappear so you can kind of see the my graphic a little bit better. So basically, we have our Pines library card, don't we? Yay. So what do I need? Okay. Well, you need your library card for one thing. And basically, you need to go to gchrl.org. Okay. You need to set up a free account with our website. Now, I will tell you this, and it's just kind of an easiest thing to kind of know. Uh, each resource does actually need you to sign in with username and password. Some of the resources require, or some of the resources will use the same username and password as the GCHRL website, and other ones will need you to create a new one. Okay, now I will tell you this to get to these resources, like let's say Universal Class, you need to go through our library first and then a little code will go and tell Universal Class, hey, uh, they're, from my, they're from the Greater Clark Sill Library, GCHRL Library System, and uh, basically give them access. And then basically what happens with that is that you'll set up a username and password. I recommend using the same username as password that you set up with the GCHRL website just so that you won't forget. And then you'll have access it I'll be able to access it that way okay so I feel like that's really the big learning curve with this is that realize you need to go to the gchrl.org website first sign into these services even RB digital and then have it go the other way there's some people that that's fine they can just pull RB digital app if they've already set it up an account but sometimes we have to go ahead through the website first okay so just to realize if you are having problems getting in or something um, that's really what I recommend um, okay, so if we go to our website, I'll pull that up real quick. <laughs> so if you have our website pulling up, this is gchrl.org talks about our curbside holds pickup which I talked about a minute ago also 3d printing and it talks about our different locations and their um, operation times okay Columbia County Library in Evans Grovetown Harlem Library Burke County's on there as well talks about their book drop-off times and then we actually have our virtual classes on here my classes this is the class that we're doing right now yay <laughs> it's inner space we're talking about ourselves while we're in the class and then we see the class online too uh, teen advisory panel 
all kinds of stuff just click here click the information and it just sends you to our YouTube channel or any of the other links that need to be posted on there okay now if we keep scrolling down we'll get all kinds of great information but let's go back up to our top and we can actually see the menu button so if you click menu so when I'm talking about all these resources they're all located uh, right here okay there's even apply for a library card or this is where it would say sign in if you were currently signed in and it just has the different sections here digital library which I'll be pointing out all of those things okay any questions about that I'm gonna keep going back to that of course okay so let's talk about our pines app okay or, or you could go to gapines.org I'll show that real quick So here's gapines.org. You can go this way too and access everything that we're talking about with our app, okay? But trust me, it's a lot quicker with the app, um, but this does give you some information as well. Okay, so let's talk about our app here. So with our Pines app, and it looks like this, like a little tree, um, we'll actually get a bunch of different features. We'll get a search, okay? we'll get items checked out which is a big one so if we tap the items checked out not only does it tell us what items we have checked out but it also tells us their due date and when they're due okay and if you can extend the due date that will be on there uh, that will of course help with late fees or anything like that <laughs> which is good now so we'll talk about when our our our, do, our books are due. Of course, any of our other things are due as well. Items checked out, and this is an excellent resource in general, just to do if you have family members, little bits, they may not remember exactly what they got from the library, and clicking here it will tell you exactly what you have checked out. Hey, if you to drop drop stuff off at the library and be like, well, I can't believe it, but I left that book, left that uh, movie or something like that back at the house. Um, but if you check this, this is more likely to help you remember it. Okay. So what is holds? Okay. Holds allows you to put books on hold and that connects up with our on holds, uh, G, the, the curbside holds pickup. Okay. Now they do have an extra form for you to fill that out. I'm not a hundred percent sure how this holds and the hold sides um, book um, curbside holds pickup works but please thank the librarians for doing that it's a great resource it, it, they work and they're working very hard to make that all work as smoothly as possible and to kind of get everybody's uh, their the books and everything safely so definitely give them a big thank you this also will talk about our fines okay now um, and also we can click here this course shows you your fines so if you do owe, if your one of your books was late, do you realize you can just click here and you'll know immediately. I know that um, growing up kind of sharing an account with friends or family members, not, I mean with family members, not friends, <laughs> with family members, uh, sometimes there might be something that was returned late, didn't realize that a fee may need to be paid before you check out something else, okay? So this, this way you already know that before you get there, okay? Also, here's your show card, all right? Now, the big one here is that our search, so we actually tap our search, and here I've actually searched for Stephen King. The important part about this is our search will actually point out that it's a book, okay? An e-audiobook is available, but this isn't the way I access that, okay? But it will tell you what's available, and it also will show you there's book, 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 and down here is CD audiobook. So not only is it available on e-audiobook, and we'll talk about that later, there's only so many that you can check out at a time, just like there's so many physical copies or so many digital copies you can check out it in a time at a time too. So do you see where it says CD audiobook? Well, there you go right there. You could actually check out the CD audiobook if the e-audiobook wasn't available right now, okay? Or vice versa, or vice versa. 
So there's our finds that I was talking about. Tap in there. And then we also have our library card that pops up as well, okay? So instead of you saying, oh no, I don't have my library card, um, you can use it digitally that way. Okay, any questions about that? I actually did not know a ton about the the digital app until one of the librarians told me about it. He goes, it's great, you should really use it. And I go, well, I haven't really used the app much. He's like, wow, I didn't know that I could t t put books, um, re recheck out books. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some of our other resources. Let's talk about lawdepot.com. Again, this is one of those where you don't actually go directly to Law Depot, okay? Um, we actually going through Law Depot through our website again. Uh, I'm anyway. It may ask for a username and password, and like I said, you may have to set up one. But again, you need to go through our website first and uh, be logged into your account. All right. So let's talk about what can we um, basically get from Law Depot, and let's see if I can show that real quick. <laughs> I'm going to log into my account. Just give me a minute. There's the there's the curbside holds pickup request. Mm -hmm. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So it is, let me make sure I'm in the right place. So I basically click where it says education and research. I click legal and then I say leak law depot. Okay. And it'll pull up and show me this. I click, whoop. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. So let me log into that real quick. And it's loading. It's still loading. Okay, so while that's loading, I'll continue talking about it, okay? And then hopefully it'll finish in just a second. So basically the big thing is that we get asked a lot, and uh, while getting ready to teach this class for the first time, I asked a lot of the librarians and said, what do people come in and what are they asking about? And said a lot of them they want to know about the of course the last will and testament and also the living will as well so last will and testament is who gets your stuff and the living will is what happens to you if you are incapacitated okay so you can't make those decisions what do you want that to be that's what your uh, living will does so the last will and testament can be very specific and it is kind of a form but the good part about the form here we go here we go. So here's our Law Depot. We can have full access to it. It's logged me in. I can do a search for stuff. And if I scroll down here, it's going to show us the main topics. Um, if you have any questions about, if you're looking for some legal stuff, go ahead and just ask. Uh, you know, now and I can kind of fill out some information. So basically, what are some of the big ones that people ask about? Uh, they ask about the last will and testament. They ask for the living will. This is can get very specific about you can actually itemize things. Who gets what? Uh, there was a lady that was looking for one and she wanted to make sure that it was for her um, would help her pet. And then we actually has a whole little section on there 
and you basically kind of fill the forms out and it fills fills the all the content out and then you have something really nice to print out if you want to also bill of sale uh, we talk about the the handshake or the virtual handshake as well and also the child medical consent forms as well I have a big question about those now you'll have to check the website I do believe I will have to check that I think I had read the other day that um, notaries are, can be set up but you have to set a, um, a an appointment to be able to do uh, notarization at the library but it's not Uchi Creek Library it's now the Grovetown Library of course but you'll have to check just call in ask questions about that and then they'll be happy to help you in any way they can okay okay so we're talking about selling stuff it even has information about um, uh, travel consent, starting a business, which can be very important, planning an estate, renting. So let's do plan my estate. And it kind of goes into talking about last will and testament, power of attorney, health care directive. So basically, could you do a last will and testament and then um, set it up so that you can actually have it notarized? Remember, your bank may actually have a notary too. Most of them, I will say, banks do have notar uh, notaries, but you just have to check and make sure, of course. Not 100% sure, you know, about everything right now. So basically, it's kind of like a document that you fill out, and it gives a little bit of a, you know, basic form. But then we can actually go in and make a lot of changes to it. Basically, who will get your stuff? And there are places that you can itemize things about who gets your stuff, okay? And like I said, there was a lady, she wanted information about um, if she had a pet, how would that pet be taken care of? And that was listed in here too, okay? Who would be the guardian of the, of the pet? And even to the point of who would get um, you know money to take care of the pet as well, because that could be very important. And you basically just click here, fill out the information, and you kind of get it instantly. And remember, if you go to the Law Depot just by itself, realize that that is does a uh, cost, but through the library, it's completely free. Okay, so it's a, leave, a resource that a library pays for, and just want to let you know that it's available and definitely use it. Okay, because there's a lot of folks, of course, that'll just you know they live in our area, even have a library card. They're just going to Google doing some basic searching and then some websites are popping up saying they'll charge or or it's not as detailed as this, of course. Okay, so that's the Law Depot. Great resource. Let's talk about our Galileo. Okay, now if you're accessing the Galileo, a lot of the times you have to call in and, and find out what the password is to access Galileo. Okay, I've had it where um, I'm away from it, and it auto will log me in through the <laughs> the website. And then I have other times where I do have to have the password. Just call in the library, be happy to tell you the password, and then you'll be good to go. Okay. It allows access to over 10,000 databases, indexing thousands of periodicals, scholarly journals. This information isn't uh, available through free searches or search engines like Google or anything like that. Google actually does have its own um, scholar scholarly section they call it scholarly okay um, over 10,000 journals titles uh, provided full text other resources include encyclopedias business directories and government publications so this is more than just doing a Google search and just finding a website this is for someone that does have some very important research they're doing also they're trying to find out um, specific information maybe for a class maybe for you know, maybe for a class, maybe for a teacher in some ways, and they need to make sure that it is a peer reviewed, a peer reviewed um, resource. So let me see, I was going to show you there. Okay. So, well, okay, I'll just type it in by hand.
Okay, so when we go here, it pops up here, and the big thing is it talks about what kind of information you're searching. And a big one is it's K-12 is available, okay? And remember, you may have to call in to find out what the password is for accessing Galileo, but after that, you'll be good to go, okay? And again, I've had it where I click through the library and then it just lets me in. So either one of those if you're having trouble, <laughs> okay? Let's talk about our pitfalls, okay? Things that I think uh, folks that are new to this are trying it out and it isn't working for some reason. So many library services, just like I said, need to make sure that you have your library ID, your library password set up on the GCHRL website. Um, try to keep the same account. Like I said, if you're trying to access some of the, the services through gchrl.org, you click them and it pops up and says, hey, you need to set up a username account. Why can't I just go to these uh, accounts um, separately like Mango or whatever? Well, because when you actually do it through the library, you actually get a nice little code that goes along with you and lets that website know that you're from our library and to basically give you uh, free access, okay? Um, I'm not sure because we are living in interesting times right now. Uh, you'll have to check the website about the holds information. Uh, librarians are working as hard as they can on that. Of course, if you have any questions, just call in and they'll be happy to help in any way. Uh, so basically, that's, that's kind of how that works. Do you realize the big thing about some of our e-things, and I'm going to talk about our e-books and stuff, and also our Acorn TV. Do you realize that some of these services one of the things that we have going on is we only have so many digitally that we can have just like in the physical world we can only have so many books well we can only have so many subscriptions to something at a time so what's the best thing to do if it's not allowing you to check out an ebook you can be added to the waiting list if you're trying to check out like a subscription to something like the acorn tv and it's not working Try again later, okay? That's the best I can, advice I can give you. Um, it's like a rotation. Uh, you're trying to get in and somebody else's subscription is expiring or someone else's uh, you know, checkout, digital checkout is expiring. Uh, try again later today. Try again tonight. Try again in the morning, okay? Uh, try again a week from now. You just have to see um, what happens. So just keep trying. <laughs> It should be available soon, okay? All right, so let's talk about RB Digital. And if I was in class, I would say, who uses RB Digital and who likes RB Digital, okay? And usually I get a bunch of hands that are raised saying, we absolutely love RB Digital, or someone says, that's why I'm here. I'm here to learn about the eBooks and the audiobooks, okay? Uh, so, so, I'm trying to imagine the, the kind of the way it used to be, and of course now most of us have a smartphone or a smart device or like a Amazon uh, device or something. And I do recommend those a lot of the times, and I know that the, the holidays are coming up in a few months here, and they'll Amazon and different places like that is actually going to be having their tablets on sale. Um, so if you are accessing stuff with just your cell phone and you go well, my screen's a little small to read kind of a magazine I don't really want to read a book on my phone. That's fine. Some of those devices. I purchased a, a 7 inch screen uh, For a family member and at the time it was just $40 through the Amazon fire and then I could access RB digital and everything um, very nice as a separate device because not everybody wants to read on a small screen, okay? Of course, all this is available uh, to access through the website as well, so you can see it like on a laptop too, okay? So let's talk about the kind of stuff that we have. Now, you won't really see where it'll say the e-audiobooks, so let me mean electronic books. I've added, actually added the e here. Um, it's not the what they call it, but I figured that made a little bit more sense because if I start talking about audiobooks, um, some people will be like, oh, the CDs you rent. No, no, the the digital audiobooks. And I was like, okay, well, the e-audiobooks because they're e-books, they're e-audiobooks, all right? So RB Digital 
does the e audiobooks ebooks and it'll do the uh, electronic uh, comics too and electronic magazines that you just read right on the screen okay now a big question I'll get asked is are there any late fees no there's not any late fees okay all that happens is basically you have the audiobook checked out you have the ebook checked out the magazine or whatever and when it um, expires or when it's it's times up or the subscription is up either one it just is up okay you don't have to go in there and <laughs> digitally return it or anything like that okay you don't have to do that you can just set it will just expire you'll come back in and say that your you know your your ebook checkout has expired do you want to try to check it out again okay so your time is up so don't worry about any kind of late fees. No late fees are going on here at all. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And we'll kind of look at that. Now, how do I access that? Well, let me let me go ahead and, and um, make sure I got that working and I'm logged in and everything. Uh, it's loading. <laughs> okay, so let me show you. So I'm back at our main library page. There's there's different ways that you can access it too. So we do have more than one way to access. The easiest way to do is, of course, click the menu, click Digital Library, and this is just for the website or even the first time you're going here. Okay, say Books, RB Digital Books, and then boom, it takes me to RB Digital. I do recommend you use the website the first time trying to access this. Okay, it'll come in here. It may ask you which, to set up a username and password. Okay, it should. Um, and then basically you sign in now after that once you have a username and password set up for RB digital do you realize you can then download the app on the App Store yep the app on the App Store and they even have of course it's available on Kindle Fire there you go the app on the App Store and then log in with that same username and password this is again is why I kinda recommend all these little separate things you have the same username and password as you do with the library uh, gchrl.org website too okay and then you can log in access all of this stuff on your phone on your tablet you know on your device and then you can walk around and listen to audiobooks and all this kind of stuff okay so let's see uh, kind of what's available here so it kind of pops up and it's telling us about audiobooks okay And here's our magazines. I will tell you the magazines. There's more magazines on here uh, that I can, you know, know of than ones I don't, because there is a lot of magazines on here. The big one, uh, folks will ask me, is the, you know, like Audubon's on here. Audubon. We did the bird class yesterday. So, anyway, all kinds of really neat uh, books in here. I mean, excuse me, magazines in here. There's a photography one. Yeah. Okay. That could be really good. Do it yourself. Discovery. There's drawing complete courses. Interesting. Now, uh, folks will ask me, what about Consumer Reports? Well, Consumer Reports is not on here. And a lot of folks will say, hey, I need the Consumer Reports one with has the cars in it. Because, like, well, um, there is another way that you can access the consumer reports. Will it have you know this current year's car uh, issue? I don't know, but I'll actually point that out a little bit later. Okay, Food Network, all kinds of good good uh, information on here, and let's see. Oh, it's on the rotation now. I'm going to click the photo one. And then basically, what you do is it pops up and says, "Here's my issue date." 2019 I will tell you that some of our magazines are not being in print anymore so they may have basically the the oldest version of the magazine on here or the most current 
I guess you'd say. If we go down here and click all issues, you can actually go back and see previous issues as well. It looks like this magazine may have stopped printing in 2019 in October. Okay, but, or that's just what we have available. That's possible too. Let's see, did it stop? No, I don't have any details about that. Anyway, so basically you just click check out, check out, and then you can flip through it and view all that, okay? Just like it's a real magazine. Now, the ebooks are on here as well. So we have our audiobooks is the big one that people ask about. Like here's the stand, and it'll say for 14 days. You can choose, uh, yeah, you really want to check out a book like the stand or something. A really, really, really long book uh, as far as you can. Uh, so there's your basically click check out there. Now what it will say is if it's not available, then you can say add it to my wish list, okay? If it's not available for checkout. Now it will kind of have a, has a pop-up player on this, but if you're actually using the app, it actually has like its separate little player, has a play plus button, and it also has the speed up feature. So you could actually listen to a book uh, 1.2 times faster, 1.5. So if that's what you want, you're trying to listen to this really long 14-hour book. Of course, you don't want the person to sound like blah, 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 and you can't understand what they're saying. But usually a 1.2 or something can save, uh, can save a little time out of an hour. <laughs> it doesn't sound like they're, um, uh, you know, chipmunks or something. Okay, so here's our e-audiobooks. Similar. It's like its own thing that pops up and allow you. There you go. So this one currently not available. I can put it on hold, okay, or add it to my wish, my wish list. So when it does become available, I'll be able to get an alert so that I can check it out, okay. I assume that would be very popular being a Michael Crichton book. And this is actually a good opportunity. It's sad, I know, when our with the book or whatever that we wanted was not available, but just try again later. And this might be a good time to try to, to do a little bit of exploring and see what other books are available and try maybe a new author that's similar. Okay. That's trying to be positive. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to read another book. It's like, well, I can understand that. But yeah. Okay, so there's our comics. It kind of uh, flows just like it would if it was the magazines, okay? There's comics, friends, family members. may have been watching the Marvel movies and want to get into reading some of the comics and stuff. Uh, well, here you go right there. It's Captain Marvel and stuff like that, okay? Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man. Everybody loves Spider-Man. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit interesting one of the things the way that we actually access or resubscribe to things like Acorn TV is we can do it through the RB Digital app, okay? Here's our Indie Flicks we're about to talk about, and here's our Quello, our concerts that we're about to talk about as well. So we kind of covered this part. Does anybody have any questions about this? Any questions? Uh, the biggest negative is I'll get, I don't really, it works great. It's just someone saying the book I, or, or audio book I wanted isn't available. Again, try again later. And again, uh, maybe try a different author. Okay. Okay. Just like if the book or whatever wasn't available at the main library, you just try something else. You go, well, they only don't have so many. This kind of works the same way. Okay, so let's talk about some of our the, the artist works a little bit. Now, of course, us being at home <laughs> and staying safe, uh, now's a good time to do some of our, our uh, the artist work. So let's try, try that out. This will actually pop up, and this is actually accessible through the RB Digital app. Okay, so you, this is how you'd access this on your phone. Mm -hmm. It's going to forward me. Let me make sure that's off. Okay. 
Now, for myself, when I was first researching this class, when I heard the term artist works, I actually thought that was about painting, okay? So I thought it was like painting courses, but it's not. It's musician courses, okay? Usually in class, I'll play a little bit of a sample on there, but because it is involved with music, um, I don't want YouTube to say it's copywritten or something strange. I'll just kind of, I'll actually have it muted here so you can actually get a little bit of a feel of it. So lots of different instruments on here. Now, of course, is a great time to, while we're trying to stay at home and safe and everything, here's even DJ stuff going on, acoustic guitar, um, just kind of the basics. So. If we go to the different sections, there's our introduction. And I would just mute that. Hold on, if I can find the mute. There it is. So basically, we have uh, he comes on, and this is our first class here. So he's going to talk about the different parts of our guitar and everything and that should be similar with the different instruments okay so again this is free through the to use through the library great resource I could see some people uh, especially um, trying to learn uh, young learners you know some of these courses you know are hundreds of dollars uh, through certain websites so this is a great thing to access and again I feel like I'm sharing information that not everybody knows is available through our library as they say or more than just books. <laughs> We're digital books too. So he's talking about the different, oh, I thought he was gonna point at something. Anyway, that's what he's talking about, okay? So you kind of get the gist of that. And again, this is all accessible through the RB Digital um, app as well, so. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's talk about our TV stuff. Yay, the fun TV stuff. Yay, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so we're going to talk about Acorn TV. Who has used Acorn TV before? Mm -hmm. Should really like it. It's all British TV shows and British movies and stuff. Uh, then I'll ask, who's used Indie Flicks before? Ah, I don't know much about Indie Flicks. Okay, well, we're going to talk about Indie Flicks. Indie Flicks. So we have our Indie Flicks right here. We also have um, uh, Stingray, the Quello Live Concerts connection as well. And these actually have a free seven day subscription. Now, most folks, you'll see a commercial, you know, it'll say something like, you know, try our service free for seven days. What this really is, is after the subscription's up, just come back in and basically resubscribe. The library does pay a fee uh, to be able to subscribe. So definitely, if you do subscribe, use it, you know, that's what we want you to do. Uh, if you get a service, if you're using a book, rent an audio book, use it. Uh, watch movies, do all that kind of good stuff, all right? That's why we try to uh, work hard to get these services to you uh, so that you'll use them, okay? So definitely tell friends or family members. You may have to see someone that says, hey, Acorn TV. So someone goes, hey, you know, you can get that free through the library, and they go, what? That's right. Again, there's no uh, limit to the how many that you can, how many times you can check out. Uh, just, you know, use the service. It'll expire after seven days. Uh, pull up the RB Digital app, tap it again, just say resubscribe. Now, I will tell you, these are similar to the ebooks. So there's only so many subscriptions that we can have at a time. Okay. So if it says the subscription is unavailable, which most of the time it's not unavailable, um, you may, may have to do it later on that day, the next day, maybe even the worst case scenario, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. But most of the time, you'll be perfectly fine because people have started their subscriptions and they're being they're ending, and there's new ones that are rotating constantly. So when I really do mean try in an hour, try this afternoon, you know, try later tonight, try early in the morning. Um, if any of these features are um, 
you know you can't check out there's other people's that their ten their seven days are, are in and up too but lots of great stuff on here and let's talk about that a little bit so here's kind of a bit of a sample of our acorn TV and I'm actually gonna pull up <laughs> Me one second. There it is. Okay, so that's under. Oh, neat. I even have a trailer I could show. But anyway, let me show you this and then I'll show you how to access it. So this is really the easiest way to access it is through the RB Digital app, okay? I know that may seem a little strange. You're like, well, RB Digital only does the eBooks and the audiobooks. Well, it does the comics, the magazines, and it also is how you can easily access the um, Acorn um, subscription as well, okay? So if I'm doing this, this that's where I'll go. I'll just pull up the Acorn and then just, um, excuse me, I'll pull up the RB Digital, tap Acorn, and hit subscribe again. All right, so let's talk about some popular shows that are on there. These are all British shows. There's Agatha Christie stuff on there, Agatha Raisy, Raisin, murder mystery kind of stuff. I think this is about a, a judge or something. I don't know this show. But I've had a family member that really got involved in this show, wanted to watch every single episode. It's a really neat show. It's based in uh, Canada. Uh, during the early 1900s and they're detectives and they try to solve murders and crimes and stuff but it's a little bit I won't say silly it's a little bit fun because they'll have different um, uh, celebrity history historian his uh, how do you say celebrity historical figures people that were famous at the same time with the show's time frame like uh, Mark Twain comes and visits uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Mark Twain is actually played by William Shatner, which is kind of funny. He has a big mustache. And apparently someone is trying to assassinate him. Oh. And uh, they have to uh, find out who it is. So a lot of that kind of stuff. And it has a bit of a CSI flair. So if you like the, the newer shows, CIS and everything, this is really neat. And it's in Canada. Uh, so <laughs> they talk about the states and stuff. Hey, Mac, how are you? Yes, absolutely. The Acorn TV is great. <laughs> anyway lots of great shows on there um, so yeah so that's a great thing to have and of course you can use it it's, uh, the seven days and just resubscribe again and you can check it out as many times as you want okay so it's like a book being checked out do you realize it does cost the library to use it to do the subscription so nothing no cost to you <laughs> your tax dollars at work but just realize, please use our services if you check anything out, okay? It's like, uh, what is it, someone says, uh, like, uh, Grandma would say, you know, eat all you want, but um, get all you want, but please uh, eat all you get. <laughs> and tell a friend about that. Okay, so, let's see. If I go to our main website, of course, RB Digital is really the easiest way to do this, okay? But if you go to our main website and you're trying to access it, it's actually, let's see, digital library. And then you go to audio visual, okay? And then Quello is here, which I'm going to show that in a second. Indie Flicks, and here's Acorn TV. And here's Acorn TV. And it actually has a little trailer, I believe. 
Rule number one, get them laughing. That's uh, basically the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, no, the holy grail is the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, if you're going to be pedantic. Do you bathe at all? Yes, I do. Well, it's obviously time to step it up. I seem to spend my life searching for patterns. What if there isn't one? She's done nothing wrong. Why did you just leave? I have come halfway around the world for you. I'm not giving up that easily. Are you interrogating me? Well, of course not. Uh, simply asking the questions that need to be answered in order to find out who killed him and why. I figured you out. Well, you've succeeded where so many ex-wives didn't. Are you nine? It's all over this, Jack. No question, you were next. This is not a game, mon ami. Tell me the truth now. It is your only chance. VP. So this kind of has a bit of a list of what um, he was kind of expected on there. So definitely try it out, you know, and kind of let me know. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised about some of the stuff on there too. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about our next part. Let's talk about indie flicks. Okay, indie flicks is similar. Oh. By by the way, you you um you basically remember it, it's similar to RB Digital, so you get your password. Um, you can actually download the app to your uh, TV, Roku, uh, if you have smart TV or anything, and then actually access uh, Acorn TV. But you can actually act, download the Acorn TV app separately, um, and have it on you know your your iPhone or anything like that, so it can go with you. Okay. Hello. <laughs> so do realize that, okay? So we're not talking about just something that you watch, you know, on your your smartphone. You can download the Acorn TV app and watch it on your TV too, like a Roku or Amazon Fire device. Okay, so this is similar as well. Once you log in, set up your username and password, subscribe to the seven days, then you get access to the IndieFlix, and it's again, it's a separate app that you download. And um, sign in with your username and password, and then you access. Now it is called Indie Flicks, so it's supposed to include a lot of independent films from basically around the world. Uh, some of these are uh, sub uh, subtitled because they're in a different language, of course. But then you actually look on here. You actually look on here, and then. Um, You look on here and you can actually see that there are lots of different shows. There is the uh, Magnificent Seven is listed on here. And then they have some more current TV shows and stuff. Uh, which is kind of surprising. You go down there and it's Beverly Hillbillies. Okay. Also, Dragnet, He of the Night, Magnificent Seven, uh, The Hustler, The Third Man. So there's a lot more going on here than just independent films. This is like one from South uh, Korea, I believe. And let me show you that real quick. So again... loading give me one second 
Okay, so here's Indie Flicks, and the way I got to this is basically uh, the same way. Okay. All right, doing the digital library, audio visual, and there's Indie Flicks. So here's our Indie Flicks. So lots of interesting stuff on here. Dial in for murder. Documentaries, comedies, hard stuff, foreign stuff, thrillers, sci-fi, animation, and there's classic stuff on here as well. And remember, this is free through the library, so why not? Classic TV. So the big question is someone will say, hey, well, who is the Indie Flicks for? I would say pretty much anybody because it may have something that you're interested in on here, may surprise you of what's on here, and, uh, you know, it's even got cartoons and stuff like that too. Musical, arts, all kinds of stuff. So that's Indie Flicks, and again, that's like a separate app that you can download. And it tells you a little bit more about that, okay? All right, so just kind of covering what I just covered a few minutes ago. That basically we have RD, the login with the RB Digital. Go to the menu, select entertainment, select services you want, select show or movie, and basically do check out, and it'll pop up and say, okay, you want to check out the RB Digital for seven days? And you're like, yes. And again, you can download the app and then log into your username and password. And the only thing you'll have to do is do the resubscribe and your username and password should already be signed in, so you only have to really do it once. Roku devices, um, App Store, you know, the streaming stuff, Smart TV if it supports it, Amazon Fire Sticks, all that kind of good stuff, okay? All right, now let's talk about some of our, can, oh, any questions about this? Any questions that we, we just covered? I hope you'll try it out and let me know about in a future class. If you're able to use it, access it, and be able to have have fun with all the stuff we just talked about, the audiobooks, the ebooks, the Acorn TV, all that kind of stuff. So now let's talk about Universal Class. And how do we access the Universal Class? Oh, the, uh, let's see. logging in here so basically the uh, the Quello because I was going to tell you about that I'm sorry so audiovisual we have Quello here as well I quit Quello it basically uh, signs me in these are all lot recorded live concerts okay they even did a special thing about uh, Woodstock here's like Rolling Stones it's kind of their specialty so lots of different concerts, lots of different um, artists that are on here. Deep Purple, Elton John, Nirvana, the Spice Girls, there you go. Queen. So if you just want to hear, um, Nora Jones, there you go. Here's some behind the scenes documentaries. There's one about Woodstock, which looks interesting. Metallica, The Doors, The Who. 1975, Bastille, you know, Monsters and Men, Coldplay, even Wu-Tang Clan's in here. So basically it's lots and lots and lots of uh, music. So uh, maybe you're missing uh, going to a concert. Well, why not watch a concert? There you go. <laughs> okay, so I will tell you the, that the Quello is more of a... Uh, a website that you go to and watch stuff. <laughs> I will say that. 
Okay, so let's talk about universal class a little bit, and I'm actually going to pull that up too. Okay, oh, there it is. Sorry, I had to look for it. Okay, so basically go to our menu. It's under education and research. Uh, here's a little side note here. That's the Heritage Quest right there uh, to be able to access the Heritage Quest. Here's our, so we go to continuing education and then you click universal class. And yeah, let me let me log into that real quick. Oh. This is one that I do have <laughs> actually type in my library card to access number. Hold on, I am apparently going the wrong place because I'm, oh, I need to click sign in. Sorry, I did not have to put my uh, my library card in again. I just had to go at the bottom and say sign in and then it would sign me in <laughs> with my username and password. Okay, so let's talk about what is the continuing education, okay? So Universal Class, this is a great resource that we have. Okay, and again, this is one of those free resources. If you go to just the, the website by itself, then of course they do charge, but uh, through this, we do actually get free access to our library. Hundreds of online classes. Again, like I said, now's a great time to uh, basically take a class, uh, you know, learn something new, put something new on that resume. It can't help. Uh, I mean, it can help every once in a while or I mean, it can't hurt. That's what I should say. It can't hurt anything. Uh, let everybody know, well, what did you do during quarantine? Well, I took some classes. Well, good for you. Yes, absolutely. Learn something new. Put something new in my resume. Had some fun classes, too. So this, I'm going to show the universal class, but I'm also going to talk about the ones that I recommend uh, to kind of let you know that it does have a broad spectrum of classes. So here's kind of our coding class. You know, it has a Python class and stuff, too. Um, some other coding uh, languages are on there. Here's HTML. Want to know how to build the basics of building a website? Maybe you've built a blog or something. And you want to go into diving into a little bit more. Well, this is an actual training class for there. How about here? How about a uh, resume? Uh, add something to your resume. Maybe someone that's looking to become a general receptionist or someplace. You know, just to answer the phones for folks. So let's say what kind of an impact would it be that if you had two candidates for a job, they had the same credentials, they basically had the same everything, same educational background, but one of them had actually had some uh, uh, online training class uh, to be prepared for that job, okay? So a general receptionist at six hour uh, class, it says, um, I think this is all kind of go at your speed, how fast that you go. If you go real fast, it will be less than that, I, I probably. And if you go real slow, it will be more than that. So I uh, do realize that it's about six hours, it says. Um, so imagine coming in, someone having this on their resume versus the other person that doesn't have any kind of uh, training at all. I think the person with the, the res that on their resume would have an edge over the other person. Like, wow, this person's had training in this job field, okay? The other one here is that a lot of the jobs, uh, office is what people want to make sure that you have uh, skills in, um, so they're not you're learning you're not learning on the job. You can actually handle doing things like Excel charts, uh, doing some kind of budget. Okay, 
Excel would be a great resource to say, yes, I've had training in that, even basic Word, and of course, PowerPoint as well. And this week, some of the fun classes that we actually have. So our fun classes are making soap. Want to start your own home-based business? Now's a good time to start that. We can, of course, uh, so could you take one of these classes and then basically start selling stuff that you made or just want to start your own uh, selling business? Sure. Come on, take take our eBay and Facebook Marketplace class and then make some soap, make something, and then you can sell it on those things, okay? All from the comfiness of your home, okay? Um, the Facebook Marketplace class, I actually talk about uh, porch pickups. So even in the... Even the situation that we're in now, you can safely sell items or even purchase items too, okay? All right, so let me show you that. So, and I'll show you, pick one of those. The reason I picked those four is because I think it's a good um, all-encompassing reflection of what kind of classes are available there. And you don't have to finish these classes if you wanted to just kind of jump in, let's see the uh, the course catalog here. You can do a search, and it's lots and lots of classes here. Now the big thing is remember that we do get a certificate with it, so let's do computer training. Okay. Popular courses like the Windows 10, Excel, and let's look at one that's just like Power at Word or something, some kind of general. It, it gets very specific about programs if that's what your interest is. Computer literacy is going on. Here's WordPress. The only thing about some of these is you may want to make sure that it is the uh, the most up to date you know version of that software program that they're covering. Okay. Here's even Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and here's Word right there. So let's look at our Word. We even have video. Word 2019 is the latest version of the most popular word processing application on the market developed by Microsoft Corporation. You can't escape the number of businesses and individuals that use Microsoft Word on a daily basis. Regardless of your own word processing program preference, you're bound to do business or communicate with someone who uses MS Word exclusively. For this reason, you need to know what it can do and how to do it. This course will show you the many ways that you can integrate Microsoft Word 2019 into your everyday life. In this course, you're going to learn how to navigate the new MS Word interface, create new documents and open existing documents, use templates, edit and format text, paragraphs, and whole documents, use Microsoft Word for desktop publishing, create brochures, flyers, and even business cards, insert headers, footers, images, graphics, and video, use mail merge, create a table of contents, compare, merge, and protect documents, proof, print, collaborate, and track changes in Word documents, create even more impressive tables than ever before using new formatting tools, and much more. We'll start with an introduction to the core features of MS Word, but then quickly move on to the way Microsoft Word handles formatting and styles so that you can customize the look and feel of any Word document. We then move to more complex features such as creating tables, desktop publishing, and mail merge. We'll also review how you can use MS Word to create and manage long technical documents that may require headers and footers. We also go over unique MS Word methods for proofing and editing. For example, should you need to work with a third-party editor. We will show you ways to add comments and track changes as you pass documents from person to person. Finally, we cover more complex topics such as recording macros and working with Visual Basic for Applications VBA. Our course takes you from the basic introduction to the more complex tools of Word so that you can master the application whether for business or personal use. With clear and concise step-by-step -step directions, beautifully illustrated lessons with screenshots, and HD video tutorials, this work Word 2019 online course will teach you everything you need to know to become a Microsoft Word power user. Note, you do not need access to MS Word software in order to successfully complete this course, although it is strongly recommended in order
order to follow along with the course examples. So there you go, you can see that covers a lot and it's the current version of Word. So even having on the resume that says, yes, I've taken training on the current version of Word. So it's not like someone saying, yeah, I took Word class about 10 years ago. But there's so many new things now like the cloud services and stuff to know about the benefit from. So you can see it gives a big list out of all the things that are available in the course. It gives a good description. It talks about our lessons. Now again, this is one of those where you could jump into the class, go to one of these lessons, cover the lessons if you weren't interested in completing the um, certificate, and then come in and learn exactly what you want to learn, and there you go. I know there's many websites about different topics, but do realize versus someone giving a, a blog quick you know example on how to do something uh, versus someone saying okay I'm gonna sit down to class and pretend no one this person knows nothing about uh, using this program before so I'm gonna do every single step uh, can be a lot of different learning okay so sometimes even some of the websites YouTube videos can almost assume that you know certain information that you may not and a detailed uh, talk call, um, talk class can actually uh, cover all that. Talks about our learning outcomes and this is what I wanted you to see. So this is basically the certificate that you get. Now remember Universal Class is one of those that it does charge but through our library is completely free because our library has taken care of that for us. So if you're not uh, using this, benefiting from this, um, it's a big recommendation. The big one is not only do you get, when you finish the course, not only do you get a certificate of uh, completion but you also get a online that you can print out an online certificate as well what does that mean well it means that it has a, ver a verified serial number it's something that you can put on a resume the person clicks it it takes them to the universal class certificate it's not just you saying that you completed the class yes I completed that class oh well yes I completed that versus yes I completed that class and here's a link to see that I did get the uh, receive the certificate of completion okay so again great thing to put on a resume promote your achievement even add to social media now's a great time to do that because uh, you can encourage friends or family members to you know try to focus on learning something that's what we're gonna focus on yay okay so I'm gonna click back here and I'm gonna look around here just a little bit more and then we're going to delve into some of our other topics. I'll look, let's look and see one of the fun ones. Everybody's kind of into arts and crafts and stuff. Here's cake candle making. <laughs> there you go. Cake decorator. Soap making. Lots of hobbies. Dog training. Photoshop. babysitting, aromatherapy. There you go, there's your bread baking right there. A lot of people have gotten to that. Here's your cooking basics. Digital photography, event planning, fashion design, feng shui. There's your genealogy 101. How to freeze, dry, and preserve food. Home safety, how to draw, lots and lots of topics. Great resource. There's knitting even. There's just Italian cooking right there, just specifically Italian. Music appreciation, mystery writing, photography 101. There you go, 17-hour course. Lots of great information on there, I'm sure. Pie baking, sewing. There's your soap making. <laughs> Tex Mex, tea parties, weddings and craft. There's your, we want a job. There's your wedding planner. We're gonna, there's gonna be lots of weddings in the future. Trust me, there will be. There's weight training. There you go. So lots of great things going on. Let's check out the soap making. I want to get one that had a video, is what I wanted. There we go. No, she doesn't have a video. She's just gonna talk about it. 
But I'm going to go back and see if the bread one had a video. Usually I do the canning one. So, where's the bread? There it is. Look, there's a video on the bread making. All right, we're going to go back. Let's look at the canning one because it has a, a really nice kind of introduction video to it. Or does the cooking one have? <laughs> Ooh, grilling. Before you can really start to feel comfortable in the kitchen, it's important to understand why you are there and what you hope to accomplish. Like all things you learn in life, you must have a good, solid foundation before you can build on it and become proficient. What is cooking? Cooking can be loosely defined as any action in your kitchen that gets you from point A, a pile of ingredients, to point B, a meal. It is the act of assembling ingredients and or applying heat to ingredients for human consumption. This means that cooking can be as simple as assembling vegetables to make a salad or as complicated as combining a number of different ingredients on a stovetop over a period of three hours. Cooking is actually an umbrella term for a number of tasks and activities. It's kind of like when you think of the word clothes. When you get dressed in the morning, the word clothes really means quite a few things. Undergarments, shirts, shorts, pants, dresses, and socks all fall under the category, even though it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to wear them all at once. In the same way, you can cook using a variety of different methods. You don't necessarily use them all at once, but each of them still counts as cooking. There are ten basic types of cooking. One. Roasting. Roasting is done when you cook food using dry heat. In the historical sense, this includes placing a large piece of meat on a stick and putting it over flames. In the more modern sense, this includes putting things in your oven. Meat and vegetables are the most commonly roasted food items. 2. Broiling. Broiling is also typically done in an oven. However, the heat comes from the top of the oven rather than the bottom. You can broil anything from a toasted cheese sandwich to fish. 3. Grilling. Grilling is when you cook food directly over a heat source. It includes outdoor grilling on a barbecue as well as indoor grilling. For example, when you cook a steak in this way, you place it directly on the grill above the charcoal or flames. 4. Frying. Food is fried when it is cooked in some sort of fat, like lard, butter, or oil. It can be done in an oven, a fryer, or a pan. Fried foods are usually higher in calories and fat than food cooked in other ways. 5. Boiling This occurs when the food is placed in boiling water. Many vegetables are cooked this way, although meat and noodles are also commonly boiled. 6. Simmering Simmering is a slow form of cooking. Food is not brought to a boiling point, instead being allowed to warm over a long period of time. It can be done in a pan, the oven, or a slow cooker. 7. Steaming Steaming is done by using the hot vapors of boiling water to cook foods. The food usually never touches the actual water. This is best to keep all the vitamins and nutrients in your food intact. 8. Microwaving this modern cooking type uses the microwave to warm or cook food. Because of their versatility, microwave. microwaves can actually be used to perform a number of different cooking types. For example, you can boil, steam, or even defrost things in the microwave. 9. Assembling This type of cooking uses no direct heat. It calls for the combination of uncooked or pre-cooked ingredients. Salads, sandwiches, and even more complex meals can be made this way. Baking Baking is often considered a field all its own. It is basically cooking done in an oven. Although you can technically bake anything from pizza to tuna casseroles, most people associate baking with sweets or bread. What is baking? 
As we mentioned before, baking is really just one of the ten types of cooking. However, as we will understand it for this lesson, as well as for the entire course, baking is a separate type of kitchen activity. It almost always centers on a different set of ingredients, skills, and utensils than cooking in the traditional sense. Consider it this way. When most people think of baking, they conjure up images of sweets and bread-like foods that are made of batter or dough put in the oven and cooked. Things like bread, cakes, cookies, and pastries fall into this category. If we stick to this idea of baking, there are a few common ingredients that will arise time and time again. If you find yourself faced with a recipe containing these ingredients and calling for oven time, it's a pretty safe bet that you will be baking. Flour, either wheat or white. Sugar, salt, fat, oil, butter, margarine, shortening, lard. Eggs, yeast, baking powder, baking soda. There's a saying among chefs and cooks everywhere, baking is a science, cooking is an art. This saying came about because baking is a pretty precise process, whereas cooking can take on a flair all its own. When you are cooking, it's fairly easy to make substitutions or to throw in a little extra of your favorite ingredient so that the outcome is personalized for your tastes. However, when baking, each ingredient serves a specific... Well, I learned a lot from just the introduction. <laughs> that was interesting. I like how it did not dismiss the microwave. You could do many things with the microwave, he pointed out. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about some of our other things that we can do. Um, mango's another great uh, feature. Uh, learn a new language, of course. Uh, the really cool part is it does have a app that you can download as well, so, so once you've already logged in. And like I said, someone could use that, of course, to learn a new language. There you go. Or if English is their, uh, not their first language, then they could use that as well because English is on there. Maybe I can need to work on my English as well. So there you go right there uh, at your own pace. And it has nice sound clips and everything. Uh, and also flashcards, it appears. And I haven't used that myself, but I've heard good things about it. There's also another one, uh, of course, coming up. We have our, our folks going back to school and stuff. Brain Fuse is another great thing that we have coming up. You can ask experts. There's like live tutoring going on, uh, writing labs, uh, Skill Surfer helps you build uh, skills or lessons, and there's videos on there as well and tests. Um, you can also send questions in if you're having uh, getting stumped. There's other things like uh, Flash. Uh, cards that you can create too as well to help you remember something and they also have uh, ways that you can do virtual study rooms okay I know that a lot of us uh, interesting just talking about this a year ago um, folks of course are like well I just come to the library and do a study or I'd go to over a friend's house and do you know a study or a room or whatever like well not able to do that as easily as we used to or as safely as we used to so uh, having that available even using some of our online stuff, having a study buddy uh, to work on something is still a really good idea, okay? Could encourage you to, to want to do better too. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull up. So these are kind of the little known things that I think a lot of people maybe find interesting. Of course, I already pointed out the Heritage Quest, uh, the Consumer Reports, being able to find that in the menu with our research. If I do the, there's the Merchant Intelligence one. Of course, we talked about Galileo a lot. There's even some on here that I haven't used personally. Uh, we also have the the Augusta Chronicle is on here. And if you go to, and I'm going to pull that up and show you in just a second. So if you click, where is it? All right. So if you go to our site and you click Digital Library and then go to Newspapers and Periodicals, 
Then you'll see the RB Digital, but then you'll see the Consumer Reports. Okay. I need the Galileo um, password to be able to get in that, which I don't have right now. But also, there's the Augusta Chronicle collection, our local newspaper. And it allows you to do searches that way. Um, the only thing that can hold this back a little bit is that it does have um, text only searches, no pictures. I'll only go back as far as 1994. Okay. And the images right now, they're only on 2017 for the images, okay? But they are working. They're adding more. But having access to that up uh, to that point is really good. Now, one of the places, if you do need to go further back, our libraries do uh, collect newspapers. Uh, the downtown Augusta newspaper is supposed to have really far back records in some way. So if you are being specific, doing a search, that's probably a good place to do. And, of course, you can call down there and and ask them questions right now to see um, if they'll be able to help you. Okay, uh, here we did Heritage Quest. Another one is our Gale, and I'll show that real quick. So go to our main. Go to Digital Library. Reference books, reference ebooks. Okay. Okay. So I did reference books, reference ebooks, and then asked for my library card, and I just clicked it. So, not a lot of us are not traveling right now, of course. <laughs> um, but in the future, we might. So we might want to do some research into future travel okay this actually has full books on here are they the latest latest version of these books a lot of them no but the DK eyewitness books are fantastic okay to use big recommendation on them I have bought many of those to take with me on trips and uh, even having the things of not it just being a glorified map or like even the fedora books interesting some of the newer fedora books are trying to look more like this be able to go somewhere and it actually have um, oh there's a bird that bird book ah, endangered species book interesting so these are books on here there's law there's arts literature history There's technology. I'm talking about online schools and stuff. Interesting. Education. There you go. Lots of resources here. And of course, our travel books, too. So there's our travel books Scotland, Beijing. There you go. There's Brazil. All kinds of great stuff. Click in there now. Uh, I've had someone ask me, he goes, Well, can I print? Uh, how much can I print? And it allows you to see it. You can see it as a PDF as well. Well, um, uh, with the illustration, that's the that's kind of what I'm trying to say here. Where's the there you go? View ebook. And you can see you can read all of it. Let's click to the next page where to go and it's kind of broken up like that let me zoom out here there we go does that make a little more sense now as far as printing I've actually had it where it only lets you print like uh, uh, 10 pages or something at a time or something so that was kind of how they they keep it so it's a little bit controlled still but being able to access this is a, a really big you know resource of course okay so great resources there also remember to keep up with our uh, our magazines and stuff of course a lot of our stuff it's it's listing events which uh, have been canceled but in the future uh, focus on those technology page turn the current pages of the page turner as well of course in the library updates now 
course, the library of dates right now, most of our stuff is virtual. So definitely go to gchrl.org and get into all those, those resources and everything uh, that's available. Okay. So we've kind of come to the end of class. Hopefully I was able to give you lots of great information, kind of get you started on some of this stuff. Hopefully some stuff you didn't know about. And we have covered a lot, haven't we? Okay. Two ways that you can find my classes, of course, the other librarians posting classes as well, is basically we're posting all our videos now uh, to this YouTube channel, which we'll talk about. But also you can go to gchrl.org and you can see the upcoming events are listed. We're kind of going by month right now. So when the new month happens or we get close to the new month, also you can subscribe to the newsletter as well. Basically get here, click the information, and then when it's time, and it just sends you to the uh, YouTube channel, when it's time the videos will become live just like this one, okay? Lots of resources, uh, Pines, and here's the access to the actual classes. At our libraries, we usually have little handouts and stuff. Uh, so if you do go by the library and they're available, I do recommend them. Uh, this is one that talks about all the library services, some of the stuff I've talked about. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we've covered a lot today, didn't we? Okay. Hopefully you'll try out the Acorn TV, the Indie Flicks. Okay. Get an audiobook, an ebook magazines stuff like that and of course we're doing this class again this afternoon so I'll be live at 2 30 here on the YouTube channel again we'll kind of be covering the same topics but of course I'll be talking about other topics as well uh, we'll delve into the universal class look at a different class and the interesting part about that having it morning and afternoon is hopefully you can share with friends or family and then if the time is uh, different because sometimes we try to do our classes at different times. We're not doing any night classes, but when we teach on ground at the library, we try to do that for working folks. But don't forget to, of course, subscribe and like our videos and stuff too. So upcoming next week, new class, video creating basics. So that's very exciting. And then of course, our birding class coming up at the end of the month. Again, we're gonna be doing our introduction to Rising Pi Computer and Project Ideas. And I'm gonna actually have some new projects we're gonna do. And I got about two that are listed that I'm gonna do like a hands-on demonstration of. And of course, that's where you can also get the full uh, physical computing Raspberry Pi handout as well that we do in our on-ground classes, okay? So, and then we're gonna do our video creating basics uh, class again at the end and all our resources will be free and it will be doing gadget help a morning and afternoon to try to to uh, work into poke schedule so I'll be live on the 27th at 11 and the 27th at 2 30 as well okay just remember that our libraries are opened with library with limited services and hours okay also, curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details, as I kind of demonstrated a little bit ago. Call into the library for questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like uh, our Facebook pages so that you'll get notifications when uh, things are posted there. And also, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on the YouTube channel right now, but the easiest way to find the YouTube channel is GCHRL videos. Search that, you'll find our channel very quickly. Okay. So we're basically coming to the end of class, okay? Like I said, I'll be back at 2.30 live, doing this class one more time, so definitely share with friends or family. And I'll be talking about uh, most of the topics that we covered today, but also if you come to the live class, you can ask uh, specific questions as well. Thank you for coming. I'll see you next time or I'll see you at 2 30 or I'll see you next week. Okay. So please like my videos, like the other librarians videos as well. Share them, uh, spread the word, stay safe, 
go outside. Definitely, it's because uh, of all the rain that we had yesterday, thunderstorms. Go outside. The sun's shining now, okay? Stay safe and have a great day, or I'll see you this afternoon, <laughs> okay? So, bye-bye. Bye-bye.